You're listening to Good Morning Gwinnett, a division of Noise Media Network, hosted by Audrey Bell Kearney, sharing stories about people and places around beautiful Gwinnett County and beyond. Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Southern Living at its best. Good morning, good morning, all my Gwinnettians out there in Gwinnett land and all of you around, all of my friends around the world. Oh, it's a cold day, y'all. It's a cold day here in Georgia. It's a cold day in Georgia. Now, it's so funny because I was talking to somebody yesterday because I had to go out. And um, I was talking to my friend Derek. And so I had to go out the house. And it was cold to me. So he was like, this isn't cold to you. Like, yeah, it's cold to me. Because remember, so I grew up in Jersey. So right now, 38 degrees to me right now because it's 38 degrees here in Georgia. That's cold. It's cold in Jersey, too. But I think it was 45 yesterday, and I was cold. And he was like, this is not cold to you. Like, yeah, it's cold. It's cold for Georgia standards because, you know, Georgia, I'm used to, like, 54 right now. Um, But it feels like fall right now. It's 38 degrees going up to a high of only 46. Right now, the the, the weather index is saying it feels like it's 32 outside. And I believe that because it's cold. So when I have to turn my heat on, I feel cold. It feels cold. But anyway, it's Thursday, November the 17th. Hope you guys are having a good start to your day. I, I, you know, I am. Been up early thinking, uh, brain uh, brain casting and mastermind. I've been doing all that this morning. Yep, been on the phone masterminding for about an hour and a half. Been on the phone talking to the family, business partners, all of that. All of that's been going on already. But anyway, hope you're having a beautiful day so far. And yes, it feels like 32 degrees, but it is fall, so it's supposed to feel like 32 degrees. And I'm okay with that. Here's what I will do. Turn on the heat and put on the sweater. That works for me. Now, I got to say this, though. Tomorrow night, it's Friday night lights. Grayson is playing somebody. And normally I go to the game, but I don't know if I want to sit out there in that cold. You know, I don't know. I sat out there in the cold Saturday, and I was freezing. And I had on... Uh, and it rained and so I'm not sure if I want to sit in the cold just yet so I have to because I, I don't have a coat that big I don't think and it's cold out so you're talking about at night time so it's even colder at night time but I'll see I'll see how I feel by tomorrow night by tomorrow night if I feel like going outside to support my, my nephew who's my little man um, in the cold I will and, and nine times out of ten I'm probably going to go I'm going to get my hand warmers my gloves my feet warmers my socks you know and my coats I probably have on like double sweaters and a jacket. So I'll see what happens tomorrow. Anyway, let's get this show rolling. Today is November the 17th. It's Thursday, y'all. So it's my Friday because I don't have a show tomorrow. But um, I know some of you say, oh, God, hurry up Friday. Well, today is kind of like my Friday because I don't have a show on Friday. So it's my Friday, even though it's Thursday. But it's also National Homemade Bread Day. Homemade Bread Day. It's National Baklava Day. Baklava Day. I don't know what that is. Baklava. I think that's some kind of food, though. I think it's some kind of sweet food, too. I could be totally wrong about that, but um, I think it's some kind of sweet food. I want to say it's Greek, because I feel like baklava. Baklava? I think that I think that's some kind of Greek pastry, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's National Butter Day. Oh, God, that's, that's every day for me. So bad, so bad. I'm trying to get better. Not really. I don't eat butter every day, but I do eat butter. National uh, World Pancreatic Cancer Day. Shout out to all the survivors and, and rest in heaven to all of those who could not beat pancreatic cancer. I heard it's one of the worst cancers you can have. National Take a Hike Day. Yes, that sounds good, especially when it's not too hot. It's beautiful. You want to go take a hike? Let me tell y'all something. So Gwinnett has this organization called, they got a bunch of them. They got one called Living It Up Gwinnett. And they get together and they do all these things like go hiking. They have another one called 50 and Active. That's another group. They get together and do all these things. I think they go hi- hiking. I went hiking one time in my life. And my daughter said to me, we were in Arizona. We were in Sedona. I hiked up a mountain. I was so proud of myself. And she said to some people that were walking with us, we didn't know the people. They were strangers. We were all on a hiking trail together. She's like, I'm so proud of my mother. And I heard it when she said it. Because I had never hiked before. Not only did I hike, I hiked in the freaking desert because Arizona, Sedona looks like it's beautiful though. It looks like a desert up a mountain. And I did the whole hike and then I came back down. It was pretty cool. Um, so I went hiking for the first time in my life. And it was actually pretty doggone cool. But was what was interesting about that is normally when I walk a lot, my knees hurt so bad I wasn't in any pain so I don't know was it because I was in like Sedona where all this energy is supposed to be flowing 
or was it just my mind that just would not let me focus on what could have been pain? Could have been either one of the two. Could have been the two together. I don't know. Anyway, it's National Take a Hike Day. I said all that to say, if you have somewhere to take a hike, take a hike. Ha, <laughs> that sounds funny, right? Go take a hike. Um, it's National Rural Health Day. Um, that's a big thing here in Georgia, rural health, because a lot of times in rural areas, there are not a lot of health care facilities. And so they're trying to figure out ways to make health care more accessible to people that live in rural areas. So... National Rural Health Care Day. Shout out to all the rural health professionals out there in the world. Um, Great American Smoke Out Day. Now, what does that mean? Have no clue. Does it mean you don't smoke today? I think that's what that means. Yeah, tell that to the people that smoke. National Smoke Out, American Smoke Out Day, which means no cigarettes today. Man, I, listen, people can't go a whole day without a cigarette. I've seen people who can't go five minutes without a cigarette. You're trying to get them to go a whole day, good luck. Better for you if you do, though, but good luck. All right, those are your national holidays for today, your national days for today. Let's get on with these horoscopes brought to you by noted astrologer Micah Thompson for today, Thursday, November the 17th. Going to kick this thing off like we always do, and that is with Aries. Your diplomacy will be of utmost importance today. You'll be able to make changes regarding your living arrangements. Your passionate nature may make you jealous if your mate has been less, has been too busy to take care of your needs. All right, look at you. All right, listen, just tell your mate, Hey, I need some attention. That's all. You know what I mean? Just say it. Say it in a sweet way, though. Don't say, don't start blaming. Because if they've been, if they've been busy, that means they're on their grind about something. I got to tell y'all something funny. So, um, I wanted some crabs yesterday, which, you know, my husband and I normally go get crabs on, on Friday. And, but I wanted some yesterday and he was still at work. And so my friend texts me, he's like, Hey, you want to go get some crabs? Want to go get some crabs? And in my mind, I'm like, ah, Yes. And so we went to go get crabs. So my husband called me. Um, he said, where you at? I said, oh, I'm over here eating eating dinner. And he's like, oh. But he said it with such such pain in his voice. It was so funny. I said, but I'm going to bring you something. I'm going to bring you something. He said, oh, okay. So I brought him dinner. And it was so funny because he was like a little kid. you know. And the, the thing about it is he always like, if I don't feel like going to dinner, he would pick up dinner and bring it to me. And I'll do the same, but it's just that it never hardly works out that way because we plan to go to dinner. But sometimes when he doesn't feel like going out, and neither do I, and we've had, we've had plans already, and he's already out, he'll pick up dinner. So yesterday, I was like, no, I'm going to bring you some dinner. And when I brought it, he was so happy. And he was so appreciative. And he woke up this morning, so this morning I got a text like 5.30 saying, thank you again for dinner. I'm like, oh. So sometimes, you know, just show him that you care. You know, even when you're, and I'm busy. Like, you know, and he knows I'm busy. He's busy too. So just that little thought that, and, and I was trying to surprise him. I was trying to beat him back home, but he beat me home. So I was like, oh, well, now I got to tell him because I don't want him to feel, I don't want him to go home and eat something. And I, I had already planned to buy him something and bring him something. So I brought him all the stuff that he likes from the, from the, from the restaurant. He likes crabs. He likes crawfish and he likes fish. So I brought him all of those things because those are his favorite things to eat at the at the um, restaurant. So he had all of those on his little little tray yesterday. And he was like, this was good. I'm like, was it enough? He's like, yeah, it was great. It was perfect. I'm like, great. But anyway, show him that. Show him, show Aries you love him. You know, show him so they don't feel left out and feel like you, you, don't, you don't care. Sometimes it's just the smallest things. Like $20 can make a huge difference. Trust me when I tell you that. All right, Taurus, you won't have to look... For the action. <laughs> action gonna find you today, Taurus. Okay. Some romantic encounters will set your head spinning. Money making opportunities will surface. All right, you ain't gotta look for the action, Taurus. It's gonna find you. Now, here's the thing I hope it's good action, right? I don't want bad action following you because you can get into some, some situations that you can't get out of. So, I hope it's good action that's gonna follow you. In the meantime, money making opportunities will surface. Even if they surface, doesn't mean that they're great opportunities. So take some time to do your due diligence and make sure, make sure that it's something that you can be passionate about. <clears throat> make sure that it's something that aligns with your values. Make sure not, that it's, it's not just a money making opportunity where you think you're going to jump in and make all this money because you could, you could for real get burnt. So just make sure. All right. Do your homework. Um, Gemini, your emotions may be hard to control if your mate is forcing you to undergo drastic alterations in your relationship. Oh God, that sounds rough. You'll need to exercise control. Don't let relatives make demands on you. All right, here's the thing, um, Gemini. You know, if your mate is trying to make you undergo drastic alterations in relationship, are they to your benefit or are they just to their benefit? Because in the relationship, 
you know, the changes should affect you both in a positive way. If it's going to harm you to make them feel better, then I'm, I'm going to say check that. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to give up who you are to try to please somebody else. And they're trying to make you into something that you're not. That's a relationship doomed for failure. I'm just going to tell you the truth. Because a lot of times if you're in a relationship and somebody's trying to make you be something that you're not, you're not that. So even if you change for a short period of time, that's not going to last. And you're going to be right back where you started. So you might want to take a step back and look at what they're trying to make you do, what they're trying to make you, what kind of drastic alterations they're trying to make you make. And if, it, if it's not who you are and you're not happy with it, then don't do it. <clears throat> it's just that simple. And don't try to keep that person. Don't try to change for that person because you're not going to be your authentic self. And that's going to be a very hard way to live your life. I'm telling you what I know for a fact. I've never done that. I'm, I'm just not trying to change. It's who I am because I'm not going to be happy. You know, and I, and I think I've told the story when I met my husband, like, look, bro, I'm an entrepreneur today. Put me in the box. And I don't know if you love what I'm going to like, cause I, I dated people and one guy told me, you got to get a job. I don't know what this entrepreneur thing is, but, um, it looked like, cause to, in his mind, all I was doing was at home every day. I was at home working my business like crazy. And he couldn't see that because he was the type of person who his thing was, I'm going to work and get a paycheck. And I'm like, yeah, I'm doing this business. He was like, yeah, and he stopped dating me. And I, and I had to like, look, that's what he wanted to do. That's what he wanted to do. He couldn't see it. And I had one guy tell me, and it was funny cause he swear he didn't tell me this. He told me, he's like, we went to a business meeting and then he took me to dinner and he said, do you do this all the time? I was like, yeah, I'm an entrepreneur. And he was like, yeah, I'm like, I'm gonna want my woman home, like having babies and taking care of the house. And I'm like, having babies i had a daughter at the time like i'm not having any more kids bruh and so in home taking care of some house and having babies not me and so he wouldn't date me so i talked to him some years later i was married and he he was like man i just see all the great things you're doing i was like yeah but when you were trying to date me you told me you didn't want me to do like nah i didn't say that I was like yeah you said it we were sitting in the i'm never gonna forget we were sitting in an italian restaurant and he told me that that's what he wanted i'm like well that's not me and so that was the end of that possible relationship. But he swear he didn't say that to me. I'm like, bro, you said it, you know. So I know that that's not going to be me. And you just may want to make sure that don't change yourself to try to please somebody else because you're going to be a very unhappy person. All right, Gemini. All right, Cancer. Verbal abu abuse could lead to carelessness. Your attitude could be up and down like a yo-yo. <laughs> that sound like a Cancer to me. You will stay out of trouble if you pick projects that will benefit the whole family. All right, listen, check your attitude today, Cancer. Don't nobody need you yo-yoing around them. Check your attitude. You know what I mean? Attitude is everything. If you feel like you up and down, check yourself. Don't nobody need that around them. So, look, my daughter's a Cancer. And whenever I feel like she's in one of them moods, ooh, I go in a different direction. And she'll say, I'm not moody. Yeah, she is. She can get very moody, y'all. And all the Cancers I know could be very moody. And I'm like, ooh, I'm let me, let me just get out of her way till she till she get back to her lovely self. She calls she she bounces back like a yo yo, but when she's on the other and when she's at the bottom, when the yo yo is at the bottom, yeah, I'm out the way. All right, Leo, you may have been too agreeable to someone who just wanted to use you. Self improvement projects will pay off if more in more ways than one. You would need to spend extra time sorting through your work. All right, so self improvement. They're gonna pray up projects gonna pay off in more ways than one that sounds good anytime it's a positive payoff that's great in the meantime you were so agreeable and that and that person just wanted to use you step back for a second who was it take a minute to look back and see how much agreeing you did with someone and you figured out they were just trying to use you and when you figure that out don't let it happen again fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me don't let it happen again leo don't let it happen again. Virgo, you may need a good friend to lean on. Don't tell others your plans. Opportunities to go to get together with friends will be enlightening and entertaining. Yes, listen. You need a friend to lean on. It's good to have a friend you can lean on. I, you know, I consider myself to be blessed because I think I have about four or five great friends. Four or five great friends and three great family members that I can lean on. And I, that's a blessing because not everybody can say that. No, not everybody can say that. Now, here's the thing. I lean on them for different things. I don't lean on everybody for everything because you can't lean on everybody for everything. But you got to know your people. When you know your people, Virgo, you know who you can lean on for what? Because some people I can't lean on for certain things. And then there's others I can only lean on for certain things. So know your people. But I'm sure you got somebody in your life. I hope you got somebody in your life that you can lean on because you need to lean on somebody today. So find that person and lean on, baby. Lean on. 
All right, I'm going to go to a song. I'll be right back after the song to bring you more of the horoscopes brought to you by Noda the Strides and Micah Thighs. And stay tuned. Time goes by and yet I wonder Are you and me still the same? Are you still loving the game? I know I don't You cast your spell and I went under I know the laughter and the pain Will I ever love again? I don't know If I again Take it anymore Uh huh So I stay here And hold my heart When you walk out the door Oh Made a promise to myself And I repeat it in my head Set your mind free Set your mind free no one knows what I've been through, but this is the end of me and you. Set your mind free. Uh, made a promise to myself. Let's pick it up with Libra. Your ability to be a self-starter will help get things done and motivate others. You may want to take another look at investments you are about to make. You can clear up important legalities and sign contracts today. Yeah, take another look at them investments. Make sure that they're on the up, on the up and up. If you don't understand what you're about to invest in, or this, the this, the the small language at the bottom of the page, consult a professional. What you don't want to do is lose all your hard-earned cash because you didn't understand something. Okay, just don't do that. I was talking to a client the other day, and she was telling me about a lease that she had done, but it was a verbal lease, and so um, she was saying she needed to get out of the lease because right now the way it was set up, she wasn't making any money. She couldn't pay the rent. And the person who, um, leased to her, you know, he just started making up stuff because she wanted to leave. And I said to her, is that in writing? I said, no. I said, did you agree to that? She said, no. I said, what well, is, is it in writing somewhere? She said, no. I said, well, he can't, he has not a foot to stand on. I said, yeah, he can't legally do anything to you. Like he should have put that in writing. You can't just start making up stuff because you want to, you know, he wanted to get two months worth of back rent. And she said they never discussed that. And she told him, I said, yeah, he's trying to get money. I said, but, you know, y'all didn't put that in writing. Y'all didn't agree on that. So you're not obligated to that. You know, it was like a month to month lease and it wasn't no, it was no out clause. And so you just want to make sure, you know, that you understand what you have signed up for. So that way you don't get caught up in any nonsense. Okay, Libra. All right, Scorpio, 
Don't reveal anything about your personal life that could be used adversely. Try to stay calm and whatever you do, don't nag. It's time to let your true feelings out. All right, keep your business to yourself. That's the bottom line, Scorpio. If you don't want folks to know anything about you and use it against you adversely, keep it to yourself. Loose lips, loose lips sink ships. Keep it to yourself. Sagittarius, don't try to ride your don't try to hide your feelings from your mate. If possible, rely on coworkers to back your objectives and take uh talk to superiors in order to get approval. Your intellectual charm will enhance and bring opportunities that you least expect. Look at you, charm, look at you with your charming self, Sagittarius. Yes, your intellectual charm. It's going to win some hearts and bring you some great opportunities. Yes, that's beautiful. I wish you all luck with those. In the meantime, try uh, don't try to hide your true feelings from your mate. Let them know where you stand. Listen, stop playing around. People can't read your mind. If you got feelings for them, whatever they are, put it out in the open so they know. They can't read your mind, Sagittarius, so stop thinking they can. Capricorn, your practical approach to life may charm someone who has been observing you. Folks are always watching you, even when you think they aren't. Don't hold back. You could have a tendency to spend too much on your home or entertainment. Listen, Cap, I'm going to tell you what I know. People are always watching you. So your practical approach, somebody is watching you and how you do things. Trust me. Even when you don't think they're watching you, they're watching you. So you could be on your best behavior or you could be on your worst behavior. I try to be on my best, you know, which is not hard. I can get a little crazy sometimes, but most of the time I'm on 99.7% of the time I'm on my best behavior. That 3%, I'm human. That's the human side of me, all right? So you do the same. Aquarius, Aquarius, passion is about the best way for you to to relieve tension. I don't exactly know what that means, but my mind is kind of going to somewhere, so whatever that is for you. People who try to persuade you to do things their way will annoy you. Your self-confidence will attract members of the opposite sex. Yes, baby. Look at you with your sexy self. Let me tell y'all a quick story. I got to tell this story. So, um, <laughs> I remember I went, I was at a, I was going to a business opportunity meeting and I was talking to someone, um, who I dated before, who was, who's a friend. And I was asking him, do you want to go to this business opportunity meeting with me to check out this business? And he said, no, but I know somebody who may. And so, um, I invited his friend out to go to this meeting with me. And that particular night I had to get on stage and speak. Right. And so when we talked again, we were, the three of us were talking in a conversation. And so my friend said to me, said to his friend, now we all there together. Okay. So what you had to say about her? Cause apparently he had something to say about big girls. Right. And so the friend said, I ain't gonna even lie. I ain't gonna even lie. She got up there and spoke. She was sexy as I don't know what she was sexy. That was self-confidence y'all. And it was hilarious. And he looked at him like, you got to be kidding me. He's like, nah, I ain't going to even lie, man. Like, she got up there. That was that was just sexy. So I said all that to say, it doesn't matter who you are. If you have that confidence, it's, that's attractive to people. You, have you ever seen somebody who you looked at and said, how she got him or how he got her? It wasn't the looks. It was the confidence. So when you put on that, that sweet-smelling perfume of confidence, that's attractive to some people, Mo- to a lot of people, to the people who say, yeah, that's not my type. And I've had people say, you know, I know that I wasn't some people type. I even asked one person, like, why you date me? Because I know I'm not your type. And he started running it down. You're beautiful. You're smart. You're this, you're that. I'm like, oh, okay. But I knew I wasn't his type. I knew I wasn't, you know. But when I asked him why, that was what he said. But I know in my mind it was confidence. I had one of my friends ask me one time, and I've always been a big girl. Like, in my group of friends, I was a big girl. But here's the thing. I was the chick that was, I was like, look, I'm a big girl, but I got to walk with confidence. And what? I, and I think what gave me the confidence to be who I am, I was in the, I think I was in the seventh grade. I had just moved to Georgia. I was in seventh grade. I had two teachers. My math teachers, her name was Miss Pines. Um, and Miss Pines. And my social studies teacher, her name was Miss Plant. And they were friends, but both of them was plus size women. One was light skinned with very long hair. That was Miss Pines. And one was dark skinned with short hair. Both very, very, they were plus size. But Miss Pines was beautiful. Not that Miss Plant wasn't. But Miss Miss Pines just carried herself a certain way. Her hair was always nice. Um, she was, you know, she was math. I was math. I liked that. So she said to me, she said, listen, I'm never going to forget this because this, this shaped my life. She said, listen, you're a big girl. And you need to look cute all the time. Now, what that did to me 
was kind of put me in debt because I heard what she said. And so I went home and I told my mother, I need to go shopping. And I never forget, my mother took me shopping and then what I bought was some black jeans and a black and white shirt. And the shirt was black on one side and white on the other side. And I wore it to school on Monday. And Miss Pond said to me, you look nice. And from that day forward, my whole goal was about looking nice. And when I put on my clothes, I felt confident. So I had one of my friends ask me, we were grown, we were in our, in our early 20s. And she asked me, my boyfriend um, had bought me this really nice bracelet. And um, she said to me, how you get these guys to buy you stuff? And I said, what you mean? Because one guy tried to buy me a car, tried to buy me, not just a car, he tried to buy me a BMW. And my mother was like, you better go ahead with him. I was like, I'm not going with him. I don't care what you say, ma'am. Um, I don't like him like that. <laughs> and my friend was like, girl, you better get that BMW. I'm like, I'm not getting no BMW from this guy. I don't like him like that. So my friends would ask me, how do you, you know, how do you get guys to buy you something? I'm like, I don't know. But later in life, I learned that it had, it was about confidence. You know, it was about how you carried yourself, how you saw yourself, you know, how you spoke up about certain things. And that's what it was. And so I said all that to say, Aquarius, if, if you have that confidence, yes, you're going to attract a whole lot of uh, uh, attention from the opposite sex today. And that goes for anybody. If you're trying to, if you want to be the person that people gravitate to, you have to walk with confidence and pride. You know, and I don't know what that was that's going to take for you. But for me, it was clothes and getting my hair done to the point where I went to, I went to the extreme because then I became a, a shopaholic because I, in my mind, I always had to look good. So I had, and I still have these clothes. I have a closet full of clothes right now with tags on them. So I'm better, I'm better. But it was to the point where my brother said to my mom, I think you need to get Audrey some help because I used to shop all the time. So my seventh grade self was trying to make sure I look good all the time because my teacher, Miss Pines, told me I had to look good all the time. Now, eh, it is what it is. Like when I became, after I had my daughter and became an entrepreneur, a lot of that stuff kind of went out the window because now my business was focused on her. All the money went to her and the business. And I, I had a little bit left over for myself. I know that was a long story, but I just felt like somebody needed to hear that. All right, last but not least, my fellow fish Pisces, you may be in an extremely passionate mood today. I am. I don't know about you, fish, but I do feel something tingly. I don't know what that is. You may find that purchases or entertainment could be expensive. Your outgoing nature will surprise others today. Really? I, it, it doesn't surprise them most days, just today. I don't know about you, fish, but I am in that, like, passionate mood. I don't know. I feel really, I don't know, something is going on today. I don't know. I feel like airy fairy you know we're fish so we could we get them little airy fairy moves where it's just like ah, that's how i feel today i feel like that i don't know it's because i got a lot of rest i have no idea what it is in the meantime i don't know what kind of energy what kind of purchases you're going to make today but it could be expensive so if it's not in your budget don't do it do not do it don't do it in the meantime your outgoing nature will surprise others will it like we don't surprise others on a regular basis I don't know. I think I'm that I sometimes, well, maybe not. Cause I've been told that I'm, I'm analytical, which is kind of, a uh, kind of, I don't know, kind of boring. Somebody called me a plain Jane one time. I was like, really me? And that's what they saw when they saw me. They saw me. It was a girl though. She was just probably hating. She's like, yeah, she a plain Jane. I'm like, really? I get yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna say what I was about to say. But anyway, cause I was about to say something my young self would have said, um, anyway, that's all the horoscopes I got for you today, y'all. I'll be back again on Monday to bring you more of the horoscopes brought to you by Noted Astrologer Micah Thyssen. Now let's get on to some news that you can use. All right, so this is this is an interesting story, and I already see that this is going to be a made-for-TV uh, movie. I already know that. I already know that this is this is going to be, be a made-for-TV movie. Like, the outcome of this is going to be made-for-TV. It's going to be a movie. It's going down right now in real life. But I see this on Lifetime. <laughs> or Bravo somewhere has been a made the TV movie. So there's a the Fulton County DA. Her name is Funny Williams Willis. Fun, Funny Willis. And I remember I didn't know who she was, um, but I was with the I was in the, the Gwinnett County DA's office one day talking to one of the head of security. He was real nice, and he was telling me about this woman named Funny Willis. And he was saying how he really admired her, and you know she was doing great things. And I still didn't know who she was. Um, but he was telling me all the stuff about Funny Williams. Then he was telling me they were all going to, all the DAs was going to be in a meeting somewhere, all the DAs from the from the state in one room. And he was like, yeah, we got to go sweep the, we got to go sweep the area. We got to go sweep the room. They had to do all this extra um, 
security detail because you got all the heads of the counties in one room. I was like, oh man. So when he was telling me that, I felt like I was on an episode of Law and Order. So I'm like, wow. Like, ooh, okay. Okay. So that was like a little bit exciting for me to hear. So he was telling me about her. But anyway, Fonnie Williams is the DA in Fulton County. And right now she's in the midst of prosecuting um, the case against President Trump um, in the election fraud thing. And I said to myself, and I, and I just, I want to share this because I just looked at, I'm thinking about like, I feel like this is going to be a made to TV, made for TV movie because right now she's interviewing or, uh, uh, invest, she's, she's doing the investigation. And so she is the first female DA in Fulton County. So Fulton County is where Atlanta sits. Atlanta is in Fulton County. So right now, she's leading, she's the leading investigation into former President Trump's effort to overturn the election, 2020 presidential election in Georgia. And she's also um, running a recall indictments against Grammy Award winning rapper Young Thug and his associates. Now, when I when I read that, I said to myself, ooh, she's in a dangerous, she's in a dangerous position. But what I realized from talking to the to the gentleman um, head of security over in Gwinnett County is that these jobs that they have, you know, they they come on board to fight for our, and to try to keep us safe, but they put their lives in danger every single day. So can you imagine trying to prosecute the president, the former president of the United States, and then a whole bunch of people who has a leader named Young Thug? Just think about that for a second. <laughs> And so that's what she's doing. So she's right now in the process of, you know, working on both of those cases. And I just said to myself, this is going to be a TV show. Like when the outcomes, when they, when all of the outcomes are finished, I already know it's going to be on Lifetime somewhere, Bravo somewhere, maybe even be on BET. But I already feel like that. She went to Howard and graduated from Howard and then she graduated from the Emory School of Law. And so now she is, um, she is like a big dog here in, in, in Gwinnett County not going there in Fulton County prosecuting leading the, the investigation into the president for election fraud. That is, yeah, it's weird y'all. It's weird. But anyway, she's the mother of two. And, um, that's scary too, though, because you know, it's some powerful people in this world. So I imagine that she probably lives with security 24 seven, like the freaking president, because I can tell you right now, um, when I was with over in the DA's office in Gwinnett County, that's how it was. And I remember someone tried to come in and see the DA. Um, that was kind of cuckoo. And that was, that was stopped right at the gate. Like, yeah, no, not going to happen here, ma'am. It was crazy, but it was a guy. And so they put their lives literally in danger every day. And I didn't realize how important their position was. And I also didn't realize how, how dangerous it was because you have people that hate them. And so when you talk about prosecuting the, the freaking former president of the United States and then this group of people who are supposed to just be, you know, just they don't care about life, you know, that's kind of scary. So I don't know if I, um, if I would want to be a part, I, I could do that. I don't think I could, but she is going to, if she has not made a name for herself as being the first female DA in Fulton County, by the time she finished this whole investigation, and to the president and to young thug, she will. And so I know she's going to have, you know, big money at the end of that. You know what I mean? So I just, I just, I just found that fascinating because I know I've been in the position where I have heard things that I can't share on the show. Um, when it comes to DAs and, and the things that they have to do. And I was like, wow, that's because I've been in the rooms with the, with the people. So I kind of know some things. So anyway, I can't even imagine doing that job every day is what I'm saying. And I just, when I, when I was reading her story, I was like, yeah, this is going to be made for TV right here, baby. Like this, this is going to go down in history. Um, and, and it's going to become a, a movie. I already know it's going to be a lifetime movie or a Bravo movie or a BET movie. One of them channels going to make a movie out of it. All right, listen, I'm going to go to a song. I'll be right back after the song to bring you more of what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. So stay tuned. <laughs>
It's girl Audrey Bell Kearney giving you a daily rundown about what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. So Snellville has a new sign. Um, yep, this going to be, it's going to be, it's really nice. It says Snellville. Um, it's on South Highway 124 as you enter Snellville city, city limits at Scenic Point. Um, a commercial space located on Highway 24 and North Road. The sign was approved by the mayor and the council last on Monday. You know, it's so crazy because you got some people saying how great it is and, you know, how nice it is and how you know, how cool it is to see, like, the leadership and all. And you got other folks who just, people just want to, just, just say nice. How about that? You don't have to go digging into what worked, what didn't work. Just say it's nice. So that's really nice. Snellville is making a lot of changes and just growing up, like most of the, the towns around Gwinnett County, because, you know, for a long time, they were just the way they were. It was, it was, even when I moved here, I loved it because it was very, um, it wasn't so rural. It wasn't rural at all. It was pretty much developed, but it's super developed now with a lot of stuff going on all the time. So, um, and buildings coming up everywhere I, I, to the point where part of me is like, God, the, the country charm that I loved, I think is disappearing before my eyes because I was, you know, I was, I was drawn to the fact that I felt like I was in the country, but I was two minutes away from the city. Now I feel like I'm in the city all the time. 
because of all the development that's going on. However, you know, I'm not complaining about that. But there are some people you can't make happy no matter what you do. So, whatever. Anyway, kudos to Snellville for the new sign that's coming up. Um, if you want to make a, an appointment at Hope Springs Distillery in Old uh, Old Town Lilburn, you can do that. Yeah, you can have tap, Top Hat Vodka. Yeah, at, at the distillery now, that's a, Vodka is strong. Vodka is strong. But if you want to make an appointment to visit, um, they're open from 1 to 4 on Fridays and Saturdays. You can grab, grab a drink or you can grab a whole bottle. Anyway, you can go to Hope Springs Distillery to check it out. And um, I thought that was pretty cool. It was like the first distillery in, in Lilburn, I think it was. Pretty cool. Probably got a whole history story there. But anyway, you can go check it out. Thursday by appointments and from 1 to 4 on um, and from 1 to 4 on Fridays and Saturdays. So you can make an appointment if you want to go on Thursday, which is tonight. Or you can go 1 to 4 on Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, for more information, you can go to HopeSpringsDistillery.com. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. All right. So you know we had our elections. And so it's, it's um and uh, we got to run off for, this, for the Senate. But we want to know how Gwinnett fared in the voting. And I just wanted to give you some numbers about, you know, how the, how the, um, how the candidates fared and how people voted here in Gwinnett County. So, and it's a whole list. I'm not going to go through the whole list, but I want to go through some of them. So, um, for governor, for the governor's race, of course, there was Stacey Abrams and, um, governor Brian Kemp and in, in Gwinnett County, 163,738 votes was cast for Stacey and 132,942 votes was, um, cast for Kemp. And there was an independent or a liberal, I guess, 2,351 2, votes was cast for somebody named Shane Hazel. Then for the, for the U.S. Senate, um, Raphael Warnock got 175,345 votes here in Gwinnett County, while Herschel Walker got 114,910 votes here in um, Gwinnett County. And then Chase Oliver got 7,313 votes. Don't know who he is. I guess he's a liberal too. Lieutenant Governor Charlie Bailey got 164,666 votes here in um, Gwinnett County. And Burt Jones got 124,123 votes here. Somebody named Ryan Graham got 7,680 votes. For the state's, for the Secretary of State, B. Nugent got 156,000 votes here in Gwinnett County. 156,819 156, votes. And Brad Raffensperger got 131,896 votes. Ted Metz got 7,961. And Attorney General um, Jennifer Jean, Jen Jordan got 165,118 votes here in Gwinnett County. Chris Carr got 126,548 votes. And then Martin Cowan got 5,250 votes. Nikita Hemingway got 100 she's a she's a resident right here in Gwinnett County she got 159,439 votes and Tyler Harper got 129,275 votes insurance commissioner um Janice Laws Robinson's got 162,348 votes here and John King got 132,921 votes I mean we came out the vote then we y'all like we were, we were casting some numbers. Like so, it, uh, yeah, we cast some numbers. Anyway, you want to see that whole list? Cause I can't go down and check it out. But we cast some numbers in this election. Um, strangely enough, though, I don't think our people won. Like I know Nikita didn't win. Um, of course, Stacy didn't win. Uh, Charlie Belly didn't win. B won. B did win. I think did Jen Jordan win? I don't. Know. I can't remember if she won or not. She might have won. <clears throat> she might have won. But anyway, we kept, we came out to vote. And that's important. It's important that we come out and vote. But to, to see the whole list of people that vote, voted, go to patch.com and go to Lawrenceville. And you'll see the list of people who, you know, how many people came out and voted for who. Um, you can check that out. All right, looking for something to do today? Yes, Tannery Row Artist Colony Fall Jury Art Exhibit is going down today, 12 to 4 p.m. So if you want to go check out some beautiful art, you can go to Tannery Row um, and Tannery Row is located at 554 West Main Street in Buford. Uh, again, that address is 554 West Main Street in Buford. And they have an exhibit today for artists. You want to check out some beautiful artwork, you can check it out. 
over at Tannery Road, and that's going to be 12 o'clock to 4 p.m. So if you're looking for something to do today because you got some time on your hands, maybe you're off today, you just want to hang out today, you can do that. Now, later on this evening, if you want to do something, you can go to Native Cinema Showcase. Um, this is um, it's a come view selected titles of Native, Native Cinema with focuses on Native people boldly asserting themselves through language, healing, building community, and a continued relationship with the land. The last program will be dedicated to discussing the films viewed. So they got a whole uh, showcase of films about Native, I'm, I'm thinking it's Native Americans, uh, and that's this evening at two uh, 5.30 to 7 o'clock p.m. That's going to be at the Norcross uh, Branch Library located at 5735 Buford Highway in Norcross. Again, that's 5.30 to 7 p.m. You can come out for a viewing. And um, this evening, Norcross Branch Public Library, 5735 Buford Highway in Norcross, Georgia. Check it out. You interested in to find out more about the history of the Native American people? That's where you can do it at. Check it out right there. All right, what else we got going on? What else do we have going on here in Gwinnett County, y'all? Because you know we be having stuff going on. Oh, so the Public Safety, the 2022 Public Safety Fall Festival will be held at 12 Stone Church located at 2050 Sugarloaf Circle in Duluth, and that's going to be this coming Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Donations will also be accepted at the event for the Gwinnett Police Fill the Slate Toy Drive. So if you want to donate to the toy, oh, Fill the Slate Toy Drive, that's so cute. But if you want to donate to that, you can come out this Saturday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Again, that's going to be at um, 12 Stone Church, located at 2050 Sugarloaf Circle in Duluth. If you want to donate some toys, they're going to be accepting toys for the Gwinnett Police Fill the Slate Toy Drive. So that's pretty cool. I like that. I like toy drives. I told you we did one a couple of years ago. We should have been doing another one this year. I don't know why we didn't plan that. I got to talk to the president of, of this Chamber of Commerce and see why we didn't plan that. All right. So you want to take some crochet classes? They got crochet for beginners at the, at the library. It's going to be this Saturday from 11 to 12. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's in Swanee, the Swanee branch of the library. Now, I can tell y'all something. My cousin tried to teach me how to crochet, and she does it all the time. Like, she's been doing it since I can remember, since we, since I was a kid, and she's got me by six years, and she still does it to this day. Like, she crocheted, she crocheted, she crocheted, I know, it sounds really crazy. She crocheted this guy some car seats for his car. It was really nice, though. So, she, so during the pandemic, she, she's very, she's been like that whole, like, she's been very crafty her entire life. Um, I was a business person, but she had me by six years. So by the time I caught up to her, she was already on a path to something else. And I was just starting my journey to entrepreneurship. And um, I was very rigid because it was like, look, you got to do this kind of thing. So, you know, she did everything by hand. She sewed and she crocheted. And she tried to teach me how to crochet. She tried to teach me how to sew and to crochet. My mother bought me a sewing machine, the whole nine yard. And I didn't like either one of them. I'm like, yeah, this is not my thing. Um, but anyway, if that's not you and you want to learn how to crochet, you can do so this Saturday, November the 19th at 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Swanee uh, Public Library. Um, go on out, learn how to, listen, learn how to crochet. I, it wasn't for me, but some people love it. And she is a, she's a, she's a genius at it. She makes beautiful things. Like she crocheted me this really, this really nice, maybe, and I still got it. She crocheted me this really nice brow sweater, like brown and beige sweater. And I got brown boots. I got to get me some brown pants to go with it and a long sleeve brown shirt but it was so cute and um and, and I was like she said what color you want I said I want brown and beige and it was like brown and bone it was really cute but she did that for like everybody like she's made socks and sweaters and shirts and car seats anything you can name like table settings and things like that um she made everything she used to sew she used to make all my dresses when I had to have like special um because you know I've been an entrepreneur for so long and I needed like a special outfit I would find things and we would match it all up together. I remember being in this pageant one time, and um, she made me this dress that had these really um, God, I don't even know, organza sleeves on it, I think. And the the fabric that we used was like this very, it was pretty too. It was like all these different colors, and the sleeves were like really. So I'm talking about like the '90s. So the sleeves are really big and puffy. So the '90s, but it was so pretty. And I remember someone asked me to borrow my dress. I was like, "Are you nuts? You're not gonna borrow." This is after I wore. I'm like, "No, nah, I'm not lending out my dress. That sounds crazy." But anyway, she used to make all my clothes. She made my prom dress. She made. Um, she made. I was in a wedding. She made the wedding dress that I was in. She used to make all my stuff because I always wanted something different, and I couldn't go to the store and find it because I was, you know, I I told y'all before I was a big girl. And so I wanted fly clothes that I couldn't go to the store and find at the time. So I would go find something 
in the store and tell my cousin, can you make this for me? She would always make it. So anyway, I said all that to say, you want to learn how to take crochet classes, go on over to Swanee Library this weekend and learn how to crochet. All right? All right. Okay, that's all I got for you today. I got to go to my last song. When I come back from my last song, I'm going to give you my word of inspiration for the day. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. I'm telling you that there ain't no other way. Pack your bags and then you will go away. I'm not gonna be begging you to stay. Mm-hmm. So maybe if you ask me yesterday, I would handle this differently. Things are different, I'm a new. That's not gonna happen, that's not gonna happen, that's not, that's not gonna happen So even if you're asking, even, even if you're asking Cause I do what I do And it's time for something new, yeah Gotta know when I let go, gotta know when I let go Gotta know when I let go, sometimes get today it's the weekend so i'm about to say love v but before i go i want to give you some words of inspiration and this was pretty nice i sent my husband sent me this this morning and i was like you know what that's gonna be my word of inspiration for today and here goes it says allow yourself to be proud of yourself and all the process you've made especially the process that no one else can see oh my god he sent me that i was like that is beautiful I'm going to say it again because this is what we don't do, but I want you to do this today. Here goes. It says, allow yourself to be proud of yourself and all the progress you've made, especially the progress that no one else can see. Yes. He sent me that. I was like, man, that was pretty cool. And and the author on that is unknown. So listen, allow yourself to be proud. We don't give ourselves enough credit for the things that we have accomplished because we're so on the grind to keep accomplishing. And I get it because once you accomplish that one thing, the feeling goes away. And so now you got to accomplish the next thing. But here's what I would say. Show yourself some grace and allow yourself to be proud of the things that you've done. And I know he meant that for me because I'm always on my grind. 
and he looks at me and he see all the amazing things that I've done. And to me, they're just things. And I'm not saying that because I don't care, but because I want, once I accomplish something, I, I have to accomplish something else. And that's the disease of entrepreneurs. It is like once we hit that first accomplishment, now we got to hit the next one and then and, and the next one. And then I don't think we ever get to a happy place being an entrepreneur. I really don't. I think it's like always a constant got to do the next think about some of the people that you know right who have accomplished so much and they could stop right then and there but in their minds it's like i gotta accomplish something bigger i gotta accomplish something big i have to accomplish something bigger but in the meantime we forget to allow ourselves to be proud of the things we have accomplished so my um my challenge to you this weekend is to find something that you have accomplished and allow yourself to enjoy that accomplishment and allow yourself to be proud of what you've done and to sit with that for a minute because I'm going to do the same. You know, I'm going to do the same. All right, all right, cool. All right, thank you so much for being here. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you spent the last 55 minutes with me, and I love and appreciate you for that. If you missed any episodes of the show, be sure to go to goodmorninggwinnett.com to listen to past episodes there, and also be sure to connect with me on social media at Good Morning Gwinnett. Download the app from the App Store, whether you got an Android phone or, app, or Apple phone, there's a Good Morning Gwinnett app in your Apple Store, in your App Store. All right, you guys stay safe out there. I'll be back again next Monday, God willing. Until next time, my friends. Until next time, make it a great day. Bye, y'all. You've been listening to Good Morning Gwinnett. Make sure to tune in Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time to find out what's happening around Gwinnett. If you like this episode, subscribe now and share with your friends. To learn more about Noise Media Network, visit noisemedia.us.